Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we look at the Lavos 12 inch subwoofer. Um, this is available from Parts Express. Uh, just search here. This is uh, actually quite an affordable 12 inch made in Italy subwoofer. It currently is on sale from Parts Express, 25% discounted for 150 US dollars. And so the reason I was interested in this uh, subwoofer is because I'm currently looking for a replacement for the Aton 12-612 woofer that's currently in the Sabrin 1309 plan set that I currently offer. And so the Aton is no longer available. Uh, I'm not sure why, but it was a more costlier 12-inch woofer. And so I wanted to find something that was more uh, cost effective considering uh, that we're using affordable drivers with the GRS planar driver in this system. So I wanted to make it more accessible uh, for the average DIY enthusiast. And so uh, does this woofer perform adequately in the Sabrin 1309 speaker? Well, uh, let's get into it and take a look. So like I mentioned, um, re our current uh, retail is 200 US dollars and it's currently on sale. Um, at Parts Express. So the woofer uses a two and a half inch voice coil, has a rated sensitivity of 93 dB and 800 watt program power handling. So the distinct, distinctive features about this is that it has a, a thick rubber surround and it has a large uh, ceramic magnet. And so uh, to meet the cost, they had to cut some costs here and I would say that would be in the basket. Uh, so it's a stamped steel basket, but it seems to be uh, a, a good quality uh, thick metal that they've used, uh, especially considering that it has such a, since it has to support such a large uh, ceramic magnet there. So uh, they claim that it's FEM, so that's finite element um, modal analysis, optimized uh, motor, um, resonant free and heavy duty basket, like I mentioned. Um, so optimized cooling system. So it does have a vented pole piece there. And so um, the key takeaway is the large X-Max. So it has an 11.5 millimeter X-Max one way. And so um, that kind of jumped out at me uh, considering that the Aton woofer that we were using, I believe it only had about an uh, six millimeter X-Max. I'll, I'll uh, confirm that later on in this, in this video. So um, the compliance, Mechanical compliance of the cone was quite stiff. Uh, it reminded me of the Dayton Audio Reference Series uh, subwoofers that I've used in the past. Here you can see I've mounted the woofer into the Sabrin base cabinet there, which is a, a face mount design where the driver comes in and is mounted from inside the cabinet. So uh, here it's pictured with the complete system and it's a nice looking driver. So uh, for the testing, I set it up and I played some bass heavy music for about an hour just to warm up the driver and get it worked in a little bit. Um, I had it connected directly to my Hypex FA501 plate amp with uh, no crossover, no EQ. So I moved the bass cabinet to the middle of my living room and conducted a near field uh, measurement here. And so you can see in red, the woofer has a, a nice linear response up to its mechanical breakup, which is at about 600 hertz. And um, the tuning frequency you can see based on the port output. So I put the mic at the port. You can see here that the cabinet is uh, tuned for a 30 hertz uh, reflex alignment. So I'm um, just showing step response, which uh, seems to be well behaved. Um, we looked at uh, burst decay. You can see here, most of this is gonna be my room or the uh, the noise reflections from inside the cabinet. The cabinet was filled 100% with uh, polyfill, but still um, we see some things coming through there, which is pretty normal. Uh, burst, or the, the waterfall, you can see here that there is a uh, uh, peak there at two kilohertz, but otherwise uh, driver's pretty well behaved through its pass band. Um, looking at harmonic distortion, I tested it at 85 and 95 dB. You can see that the driver um, is very low distortion, uh, even into the lower bass. So we have about a quarter percent distortion at 100 hertz for the third harmonic. Increasing the output 
SPL to 95 dB. We see the driver isn't even breaking a sweat. Um, har third harmonic is still low at only 0.34%. Uh, so I decided to uh, do intermodulation distortion and just to uh, take a look at my environmental noise with my test setup. Uh, you can see here um, it's from minus 60 down to minus 160 and so the overall environmental noise in my my test environment is at, is at about minus 150 um, there so um, I tested it initially uh, from 50 Hertz up to 4 kilohertz with a multi-tone test signal at 85 DB and we can see that distortion never exceeds the uh, minus 52 DB uh, noise floor with this woofer if we increase the test signal to 95 dB, uh, the driver remains very low at minus 48 dB if we're looking at the 100 Hz region. Um, for curiosity's sake, I decided to see how the driver behaves if we increase the output to 105 dB. And so this would be representative of a loud rock concert. This is, uh, I would consider, extremely loud. And so we can see here that distortion remains low, again, at minus 40 dB. And so we haven't even uh, pushed beyond the 1% harmonic distortion, or sorry, not harmonic, but just distortion um, with a difficult test signal. So um, the driver has plenty of output. Now, you may be wondering uh, why my frequency response measurements uh, show very little bass output. You can see it falling off quite sharply. Uh, below 100 hertz. This is because I'm not uh, using room boundary reinforcement to uh, reinforce the bass frequencies. The test was done in the middle of my room and as most of you know there isn't going to be very much bass output um, if you have a speaker positioned in the middle of a room. And so what I decided to do is just move the cabinet into a um, regular uh, position in a room and so I've positioned it about a meter away from the one wall and about uh, 50 centimeters from the other wall and there's my cat he's uh that's Leo um, he's a Bengal and uh, he's just recovering from surgery actually he swallowed a sewing needle uh, and we saw him do it I don't know why he did it um, it still had the string on it and he was uh, goofing off so we had to get emergency surgery on the poor little guy and so he uh, he's all better now and all healed up. We're keeping the sewing needles away from him. Um, so you can see here, this is the, I'm, I'm using smoothing to, uh, because this is an ungated measurement. And so you can see here with the cabinet positioned in a typical location in your listening room, you can see that we are getting base extension down to about 35 hertz. And I did calibrate the, uh, input voltage to the driver to the nominal 2.83 volts um, or one watt of input power so the the sensitivity is accurate um, in this case at 90 db sensitivity um, and so the next step is integrating it into the 1309 uh, speaker system and so i uh, reconnected the internal crossover and did some measurements here and so I've simply spliced the uh, near field measurement uh, in the base with the gated one meter frequency response above 300 Hertz As you can see there um, this is the resulting frequency response uh, with the Lavos subwoofer and so subjective uh, and listening impressions on this once I set up the stereo pair of subwoofers uh, and had a, a pretty extensive listening session so I think um, the Lavos subwoofer provides a great overall bass quality and it seemed a little bit cleaner uh, compared to the Aton. Um, testing the woofer's maximum output uh, revealed that it could play much louder than the Aton and sounded cleaner at the same time. So um, it correlates with my test data. If we, I looked back at my distortion measurements of the Aton woofer and this uh, woofer provides about an 8 dB improvement in distortion. Um, so we're, we're seeing a correlation there with the objective test data versus my uh, subjective listening on this woofer. Um, plus uh, this has much more uh, XMAX where we have uh, 
11.5 millimeters one way versus 8.5 on the Aton. So uh, another big factor is the overall cost. Uh, this is a relatively affordable subwoofer and um, we're seeing better performance than the Aton. And so I'm um, very happy with the Lavos SSFF122.50L. <laughs> so uh, that's it. Uh, take care and have a great day.